Well, here's a story. Libya's Muammar Gaddafi's days may be numbered. NBC broke that news that Gaddafi may be preparing to flee with his family from Libya. Joining me right now to talk about the situation in Libya, Syria, and the rest of the world, especially al-Qaeda, are Tom Shanker and Eric Schmidt, reporters for The New York Times and co-authors of a great new book, Counter-Strike, which the long title is The Untold Story of America's Secret Campaign Against Al-Qaeda. Tom, let's get, let's get through the news here. Sure. Muammar Gaddafi, is he going down? Is he leaving? Well, he's certainly isolated right now, and there are indications that he may be looking for a way out. Should we be, Eric, should we be saying we'll give you a way out or say, you leave that country, we're taking you to the Hague, your life's going to be miserable, you're going to get your head chopped off or you're going to get hanged or whatever. Chris, the U.S. government secretly has been working behind the scenes for months to try and get Gaddafi out of there. Why don't we just let them go to some place like Sandals somewhere and just live there quietly? You're telling a guy, if you leave, we're going to ruin your life. So why would he leave? They try and get him out right right now. We're trying to, the, the rebels are circling Tripoli. He's I know, got, but he's why don't we, to get why don't we, try to, why we treat all right these now. guys like Hitler, like unconditional surrender? Why don't we just kind of deal with them? They're going to have to because he's under indictment at the Hague. Yeah. For the, for him to go somewhere else, the lawyers going to have to get together okay. and somehow lift the extradition. Exactly treaty. right. Would we go along with that? I think at this point, to assure uh, an end to this conflict, there will be some people quietly giving the yeah, nod. Yeah, that might be a smart one. Let's talk about al-Qaeda. The president the other day said something very interesting. He said, we shouldn't worry so much about a big, incredible, perfect storm like 9-11, where they put it all together, this incredible operation, and more about something more, one guy or one person. What's that? What do you, how do you see that in terms of al-Qaeda? What's their capability right now? Right now, their capability is diminished in Pakistan with bin Laden's death. Uh, but just because he's dead, the other affiliates that al-Qaeda has, affiliates in Yemen, adherents in Somalia, even North Africa, they're still a real risk to the United States. Well, where are they? Where are they in terms of if we try to take over Afghanistan because we don't want al-Qaeda there? Is that reasonable or could al-Qaeda operate out of Hamburg, Germany? Can they operate out of uh Newark, can they operate anywhere? They all already are. Yemen is now the leading al-Qaeda affiliate. But even here in the U.S., Chris, because of the Internet, you're having self-radicalized lone wolves, they're called. Yeah. They're almost impossible for the police to find before they act because there's no network, there's no trail. They are the individuals. But do they have that cape? Is the president right? I'm asking a tough question. Eric, is the president right? They don't have the capability to do a big operation like 9-11 right now. They don't have the capability to do a big mass casualty like on 9-11. But what they can do pick up an automatic rifle, shoot up a shopping center, airport. The uh, Al-Qaeda in Yemen has put out a recipe book for how to, how to make explosives and make these IEDs, set up their own kind of explosives. So it's one of these things where you can have small, small-scale small attacks. Aren't you amazed, still terrorize aren't the public. You amazed that we've, every time I, I'm a movie nut, every time I go to movies, every time I go to a ball game, I see hundreds of, you know, the average ball game now has over 30,000 people on it. Right. On baseball. If you go to the movie, they're packed houses on Friday nights and Saturday nights. It isn't hard to find Americans where we're really vulnerable. That's right. And that's what they're trying to do. Think of it as throwing pebbles into the cogs of the American economy, the printer cartridge bombs, the underwear bomber. These would not be mass casualty attacks. Yeah, but you can bring a plane down. That's right. As tragic as that is, the impact on the economy is bigger. Air traffic stops. Have you heard this thing about how people are now, uh, they're thinking now that in these countries, suicide bombers are putting bombs, IEDs, inside their bodies? That's right. In, in, inside their bomb, inside their bodies. The problem with that is the body exor- absorbs a lot of that explosion. So while it sounds pretty spooky, it's not very effective. Can they Suicide bring a plane down and they get better. a seat over next to the window and a guy's got an explosive device in him and he gets on that plane because the, the TSA guys don't pick up on it. Can he blow that plane apart and bring it down? Could be if the explosive is big enough. He just can't get much explosive inside the body, though, Chris. It's tough. So, we're good on that. Let's talk about this ricin thing here. Right. Uh, chemical weapon. Uh, apparently, Al Qaeda is trying to get it. Yeah. And how does book, that scare you? Yeah, we, it's in the book. We, Tell us about it. We report for the first time that the Al Qaeda affiliate in Yemen is buying vast quantities of castor beans, trying to make ricin, which is a, one of the most lethal poisons. What they would try to do is wrap it around explosives and detonate it in an enclosed place. The movie theater you mentioned, a shopping mall, a subway system. Again, it wouldn't kill that many people, but it would terrorize the country, perhaps shutting down mass transportation. Well, you could say uh, we'll hit one movie theater and next week we'll hit 100. That's exactly right. So the propaganda value, even of a modest chemical attack, would be a great. And it's called ricin. Ricin. And how hard is it to make? Um, it's easy to make if you have the right laboratory conditions. Okay. The problem with Yemen, it's you know, it's a very anyway, primitive area. Got to read this book. This is 9/11 coming up. With good timing. Here's the book. The book's called Counter Strike. There it is on the on the screen. Counter Strike. It's the untold story of America's secret campaign against the country. Congratulations. Great reporting, Eric Schmidt and Tom Shanker.